I good afternoon. Like I'm good. Well, today we wanted to start on uh, nozzles. In fact, today we are going just to talk about uh, nozzles. And that will be it. So, most of our pesticides, they are delivered via nozzles. The function of the nozzles is to create uh, droplets. It is the droplets which are targeted to the pest. And these droplets have got uh, various uh, sizes, depending on the nature of the pest. <clears throat> For weeds as target, we have got very large uh, droplets because the weeds are not mobile, as opposed to insects where we may have a, a relatively small droplets. So we shall be talking about uh, these kinds of uh, nozzles, which create uh, droplets of various uh, sizes. So I will start to present. So basically, we are going to talk about these uh, nozzles. Now, what is a, a nozzle? It is any device through which a liquid can emerge. Uh, the liquid breaks into droplets. So the liquid uh, breaks into droplets. So if we focus on the production of droplets, we have what we call hydraulic energy nozzles, where we have liquid or water is forced under pressure through a small opening orifice. The pressure required to do this may be 14 PSI or two to three bars. The sheet of liquid break into droplets. And here are the components of a typical uh, hydraulic nozzle. We have got the body, then you have got the filter, and the tip. It is at the tip where you have a, a hole where the droplets emerge. So this is a typical uh, nozzle. You have got uh, the liquid which is forced through this pipe. And you can, as we progress, the pipe becomes very narrow. And at, the, at this end, it is very small. And what images are actually droplets. I want to talk about uh, what is known as the impact nozzle. Now, the impact nozzle will operate at low pressure. So you need the low pressure for this kind of nozzle. And it is uh, ideal for the application of herbicides. Now, 
we can use them where there are problems with uh, blockages. So if you have got uh, a lot of blockages, or if you anticipate blockages when applying herbicides, you will be better off with an impact nozzle. You an impact nozzle, if you need a a, a wide swath is sprayed. Now, on the tip of the nozzle, you can uh, find probably the numbers which are written 8003. What it means is that uh, the 80, which is the first digits, represent an angle of 80. And the 03 may represent 0 0.3 gallons per minute. You know, in some countries, they still use gallons per minute. Uh, but in our uh, terms, it could be 1.14 liters per minute. But uh, what I just want to emphasize is that uh, the numbers at the tip will give you an idea about the performance of the nozzle. So that when you are buying these nozzles, you know the specifications and they write them on the tip of the nozzle like 8003, meaning the angle of the spray will be 80 degrees and the output or a spray rate is 0 0.3 gallons per minute. Now, in many countries, the preferred angle is not 80. Uh, it's actually 100. Uh, so, on such nozzles, you may find written 100003, something like that. So, this is a simple diagram showing you the flood jet nozzle and you are saying the flood jet nozzle is suitable for applying herbicides especially if you want to cover a wide swath and also these nozzles do not have problems with the blockages so they are very reliable so what happens is that uh, a stream of water is forced through this uh, channel. It will hit at the wall. Once it hits at the wall, at almost 90 degrees, uh, it splits into droplets. And this is the symbol flood jet nozzle for you. Uh, if you are purchasing it, it looks like this. So this is the bit which is the, uh, which receives the liquid at a high pressure. And then the liquid breaks into uh, droplets. This part here, the blue part is the filter, which is inserted inside this uh, uh, nozzle. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I have got a lecture right now. Okay. Sorry for the disturbance. Now we have talked about the flood jet nozzle suitable for the herbicides. Uh, we also wanted to talk about the fan nozzles. Now with the fan nozzles, uh, instead of having one uh, stream of liquid, here we have got two jets of liquid. 
uh, these two jets of liquid strike each other at an angle greater than 90. So you've got two liquids uh, which are forced to strike each other. There's also a thin sheet of uh, liquid which is uh, produced as a result. And this is what creates uh, droplets. So you are creating two jets of liquids which have to strike each other, resulting in the creation of uh, droplets. This is ideal for spraying uh, flat surfaces on the soil and the uh, walls. Conventional tractors in the area of spray boom can also have uh, these uh, fan nozzles. Now, this one which I am displaying is the flat fan nozzle. You may find that at the tip, it's written 110. This could be the angle of spray. This one is 8, 0, 2. 8 is the angle of spray. The 0, 2 may mean uh, 0 0.2 gallons per, per, per minute. This is the flow rate. But our flow rates, you know, are now in liters uh, per minute. So this is the flat fan nozzle, under the fan nozzles. So we have got this uh, flat fan nozzle. Now it can produce this kind of uh, a spray pattern. And it is suitable for applying uh, herbicides. So this is the spray pattern of the fat, flat fan nozzle. The ear is your position of the nozzle. And this is the shape of the spray out. Thank you, Yes. Ah, okay. <clears throat> let me let me check. Hello. Hello. Yeah, right. Ah, uh, good. So let me continue. Right. I was now talking about the flat fan nozzle. You can see that he sort of V-shaped uh, spray pattern. Okay, let me start. Okay, so you can see this uh, sort of a V shape. The other one is the even spray fan nozzle. Uh, before you get uh, confused, we have the flat fan nozzle 
we have got the flood jet nozzle. Now we have the even spray fan. Now this is good for bend application of herbicides. The unique thing about it is that uh, this one is the uh, It's almost like a rectangle. That is the shape of the spray from the even flat uh, nozzle. And normally we use them when we want to apply just along the crop row, a bend spray. So that is the shape of the even spray flat fan nozzle. And this is the kind of uh, spray which we can get. So please remember that uh, the first nozzles which I have described are suitable to create slightly large droplets uh, which are targeted at weeds either post-emergence uh, spraying or pre-emergence uh, spraying. These nozzles create suitable droplets for herbicide application. So remember the three nozzles. Number one, the flood jet nozzle. Then number two, the flat fan nozzle and number three the even flat fan or even spray flat fan now we are moving on to nozzles uh, which could be used to spray pests such like uh, insect pests we can also use these nozzles to spray diseases. We have what we call the cone nozzles. In a cone nozzle, we have got a liquid which is forced through a swirl plate. Now there are holes on that uh, plate. And it can produce a hollow thin sheet of uh, liquid. This can be used to produce a spray which can cover widely the, the crop forage. So this is used widely to spray uh, forage. You actually target your uh, your spray output on the plants because presumably on those plants there will be insects or diseases. So the droplets may approach the leaves from more directions compared to the flat fan. The idea is to put as much chemical as possible on the plant so that uh, insects which are hiding under the leaves could get the chemical. Or if you have got a disease which is underneath the leaf, there are chances of hitting those uh, diseases. So this is the, the hollow cone. You can see that hole at the end. This is a plastic hollow cone. This was a metallic hollow cone. So this is the 
where you've got that hole, where the liquid comes through forming uh, droplets. Inside the body of the of the nozzle, you may have some uh, filters to prevent a blockage. We move on to another nozzle. Uh, apart from the cone nozzle, we have got what is known as the plain jet or a solid stream nozzle. Now it is similar to cone nozzle, but without swirl chamber. Here the liquid just comes through without any hindrance. This is good for treatment of weeds, young shrubs or trees. You know, let's say you want to control bushes with herbicides, you can use this kind of uh, uh, nozzle. It can also be used to apply molasses to control vectors of schistomiasis uh, to ponds and canals so that you are able to reach you know the, the, the targets so this is the kind of the nozzle which we call plain jet or solid stream nozzle plain jet or solid stream nozzle that's what it looks like. You can see it, it is just, you know, a wide pipe which is narrowed. And this creates a, a droplets. So it's quite a simple uh, nozzle. It's just a pipe of different uh, diameters. We also have what is known as the foam and air operating nozzle. Now this kind of nozzle will mix air and the liquid. And it is forced through an orifice. This creates a foam. Uh, we can have a fan and cone shaped patterns. This can be used to mark swath or for just marking. This is what it looks like. You've got somebody, you know, carrying a pack, probably with the liquid, which is forced into this uh, pipe. And we said you need air and the liquid so that you produce foam so this thing is mixing air and the liquid and it is producing a foam uh, at the end it's a fog straight uh, stream uh, nozzle The other nozzle is known as the microfoil nozzle. Uh, usually this is used on an uh, aircraft. It's a sort of a needle for use on aircraft, uh, particularly the helicopter. 
it can produce uh, large droplets uh, with no drift. There are two sizes of needles, uh, which are 0 0.33 and 0 0.7 millimeters in diameter. Thick at the end here. What you see here are needles, which are arranged uh, together. And this is one example of a, a single needle. So water comes through this uh, wider part, then it's forced through a narrow strip. So this is the microfoil nozzle. It's wide at this end. Then it's very narrow here. Uh, it can produce uh, droplets on an aircraft. Here we have got uh, such a nozzle or nozzles fitted on the wing of the aircraft. So the liquid is forced into these uh, needles, uh, creating uh, droplets. So this is suitable for aerial spraying. So this is what the nozzle looks like. You can see it's quite wide at this end, then it gets narrow. At that end, that's where you get our uh, droplets. You can see there are sort of uh, screws. I mean, you can screw it on. So that was the aircraft one. Now there are gaseous energy nozzles or a twin fluid. Probably you have come across some of these uh, Nozzles, because they can be used under household uh, levels. You can use them, you know, for spraying, you know, insects in homes or in gardens. So basically, you've got a pump which blows air through a narrow a passage and you have a, a container with liquid and you have a passage which nearly attaches this uh, air outlet mm -hmm. so as you blow air across this uh, pipe you create low pressure and this liquid is pushed out of the container and creates uh, droplets. You can as well put your chemical here. And uh, usually you can screw it on. Then you can spray your chemical either in a house or across the place. The other nozzle is known as the centrifugal energy nozzle. For example, spinning disc. Now the liquid is fed into a rotating uh, surface so that it can produce droplets. This is less reliable to clogging. 
So yeah, examples. You've got this pipe here, which puts water into something which is spinning. So it needs electricity to spin so that it can spray. Here you have got also another spinning disc. This pipe puts some water and it spins, creating a droplets. Here we've got somebody carrying this uh, light sprayer with a spinning disc, uh, which is covering uh, almost one meter. It's suitable for insecticides. Uh, it has also been tried on herbicides. Then we have the kinetic energy nozzle. Now on the kinetic energy nozzle, the liquid is fed by gravity through a small hole. There's a rose attachment to a watering can. This is just like a watering can. It's a watering can. Then you have got a narrow end with holes creating droplets. Quite simple, used in the gardens. Then we have got a misty blower. It's a very simple gadget we have a big pipe here and you have got a small pipe with a narrow end this is the actual uh, mr blower here you may have a exhaust uh, fumes being fed into this uh, pipe. So we've got an engine which creates uh, exhaust fumes which are mixed with the pesticide and they end up at this uh, end. That is the kind of the nozzle for misty blower. If you want, we may call it the thermal energy spray nozzle because the mist blower can create a fogs. So it is used to produce fogs. Uh, you have a stream of hot gas which is fed into the pipe. Uh, this is mixed with a pesticide. And this can be used for disinfection. So the hot gas is obtained from the exhaust of thermal combustion of a small jet engine. So you have got that engine at the back of the sprayer. This is the tank maybe where you have your chemical. So the exhaust from this tank, yeah, from the engine, and the pesticide are mixed together. They come out as a fume, as fumes. They come out as smoke, <laughs> which can drift into this, uh, into this, in, into the plantation. <clears throat> You can see someone who is directing these fumes uh, to the trees. So if you wanted to spray trees, uh, this could be ideal.
We have what we call pressure pack nozzles. Aerosol or liquid gas. I think you have come across this. Or you have bought them. There's already an insecticide under uh, com under high pressure. When you spray, you just uh, click. You just press it at the end here, and then you get uh, the insecticide. Maybe you can spray houseflies or cockroaches in a kitchen. So that is a uh, insecticide under pressure. Pressure pick nozzles for domestic use. Now, when you are spraying the uh, important the nozzle checks, there is calibration of flow rate. You need to know the flow rate. You may also need to know the spray pattern. Uh, you will use something known as the patinator. Or you can sp simply spray a dry surface and check the spray pattern or put some colors in the liquid so that you can see the, the spray pattern. Nozzles could be damaged. So you check for damages, make sure your nozzles are spraying correctly so that you can apply your pesticides at the required dosages. So that's it on the on the nozzles. I wanted to move on to talk about uh, droplets, what comes out of a nozzle. Right. I want to talk about the droplets created by spraying nozzles. Uh, we have just talked about the nozzles themselves. So we want to know what sort of droplets they can create. Now a droplet is a sphere of liquid which could be less than 0 0.5 millimeters in diameter. We have got what are known as aerosols or aerosol sprays, uh, which are targeted at flying insects. Now about 30 to 40 micrometers This is the, uh, the diameter of the aerosols. And miss, this would be ideal for treating foliage. If you want to treat trees and the crops, cotton, you may need aerosols. Now we have what we call V aero, V very low volume uh, spray. 
oro u ero v meaning ultra low volume uh, spray or rates of application. Now, coarse spray is required to minimize drift. Aerosols could be problematic with the drift. Here I've got a table uh, which can classify the droplets from sprayers. The one with the very small droplets is aerosol, uh, which is less than 50 micrometers diameter. 51 to 100, it's mist. 101 to 100 could be fine spray. 201 to 400 could be medium spray. And at the very end, where we have large uh, droplets of 400 uh, micrometers, this is coarse spray. May be suitable for herbicides yeah, to kill weeds. Aerosol and mist, uh, you want to target you know, moving objects like uh, insects. Now we have certain uh, parameters which are important, uh, which are used when describing uh, droplets. I've just chosen a few parameters which I think are important. Number one, we've got what is known as the volume median diameter, or VMD. Now, VMD uh, is obtained, if it was possible, if you could measure the diameters of droplets in a sample. Now, the one with the droplet, the droplet with a, with a diameter, which is equivalent to the median of that symbol. That is the volume median uh, diameter. This is like now statistics. So it's a representative symbol is divided into two equal parts by volume so that one half is smaller than a droplet whose diameter is less than the VMD, and the other half contains large droplets. What you are simply doing is to find the median uh, diameter in a symbol. That is the VMD. <clears throat> If I use this picture, I can divide the sample into two equal parts so that uh, we have a droplet which does not belong to any of that group. It forms the boundary between small droplets and what we call large droplets. And it is that which is representing the VMD. Probably to make it a uh, symbol. So with the VMD, a few large droplets could, could alter the VMD. It does not indicate the range of droplet uh, sizes, since it is just a median. There's also what we call the median diameter, NMD. Now, 
the number median diameter NMD divides the droplets into equal parts by number without any reference to volume, thus uh, emphasizing the small droplets. So in a symbol, you just divide it into two and the droplet which is in between, that is the uh, median, number median, uh, it, it is representing the number median uh, diameter. Then when you have the two values of VMD and NMD, you can find their ratio. If it is equal to one, it's an indication that you are having droplets coming from the nozzle, which are almost uniform. So this is the ratio of VMD and NMD, which can describe the, uh, the, 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 the nature of the droplets coming out of a nozzle. If it is near, nearer to one, it means you've got a droplet size which is uniform. Now, some of the factors which can affect droplet size could be the gravitational force, the force of gravity, or it could be meteorological factors, things like temperature, humidity, or electrostatic forces, attraction of droplets to other materials. Now, movement of droplets. Once we release droplets from the sprayer, evaporation will take place, will affect the droplets. Uh, small droplets have got a high surface areas. The diameter is less than uh, 50 micrometers. So they are likely to evaporate. Here is an equation which can tell us, because once we release the droplets, depending on their size, if they evaporate, they tend to, to disappear after coming from the sprayer. So sometimes we talk of the lifespan of the droplet once it has been released from the sprayer. We expect the lifespan of a droplet to be long enough so that it can deliver the herbicide to its target. But some droplets may not last, they may fail to deliver uh, the pesticide. So the lifespan of water droplet is determined as follows. We have got the time equals to D2, D representing the diameter of the droplet. T is representing time. So D2 or D squared is divided by 8 multiplied by delta T. Delta T is the difference in temperature between wet and dry bulb uh, thermometers. Uh, that, that is the equation which is uh, used for estimating the lifespan of a droplet coming from the spray. So these are some of the uh, some of the equations which may be used to understand 
more about uh, droplets and the spraying. Gravity droplets <coughs> accelerate towards the downwards due to gravity. Uh, drift is minimized with the droplets larger than uh, 200 uh, micrometers. If they are very small, they can be carried away by the wind. Meteorological factors which can affect droplets. Uh, these are local climate conditions. You know, we have got temperature, it can, you know, affect the lifespan of the droplet. You know, the droplets can evaporate. And we can estimate their lifetime, you know, using that uh, previous uh, equation. Uh, wind velocity, you know, it can carry small droplets. Relative humidity uh, can affect, uh, you know, evaporation. Now, when spraying uh, tsetse flies, uh, you use uh, very small droplets, aero aerosols, so that uh, you can target the insect. But if you try to do it during the day, uh, you may lose most of your droplets because they have got a short lifespan uh, during the day. So it was recommended that uh, if you are spraying tsetse fly, you better do it during the night when the conditions are stable. Or you can also create uh, large droplets which are not affected by tablets. So that you can spray at night or you change your droplet size. But again, if they are too big, you may miss your target. One of the problems using aerosols is that uh, evaporation. The droplets do not last uh, for a long time. Now, there are other studies which you can do uh, on droplets. For example, you can uh, add fluorescent tracer to the spray and examine the deposits under URV light. Probably you wanted to see uh, their distribution on the target, which could be a crop. So you can put that fluorescent tracer so that you can uh, uh, see where your droplets are going. But you need the URV light to, to see the, where the droplets have been deposited. You can also use the zinc sulfide to make uh, to to increase visibility so that you can see your spray pattern or you can use fluorescent oil soluble dyes uh, which are added to observe uh, spraying on the forage or leaves so these are some of the things which can aid our understanding concerning uh, spray outputs or containing a uh, spray droplets probably if we arrange a day when we do a practical i may have to demonstrate this coming um, Okay. okay, sorry for the disturbance.
So let us look at the determination of droplet uh, size. Uh, you can use glass slides to collect uh, droplets so that uh, you can uh, take measurements if you want. You can also use a, a greased surface uh, to collect these uh, droplets. So this is it on the on the droplets created by the nozzles. So let me stop sharing this uh, slide. Hello. 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 Uh, sorry for disturbances. You know, people are just coming in and out of my office. Ah, uh, no worries. Okay. <laughs> uh, any questions on the droplet sizes? This is physics now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little bit complex, but uh, no, no questions. Yeah, can you imagine trying to measure the diameter of these droplets? Of the droplet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what I wanted to emphasize is that uh, different nozzles can create different uh, droplet sizes. And okay. when we have our paste, we should be able to select a nozzle which can create the ideal droplets which can reach our target. Okay. Because if you take a nozzle for herbicides and try to spray insects, you may succeed, but you'll be wasting a lot of chemicals. Mm -hmm. You need the, the right nozzle. Yeah. So, on this lecture, we just need to understand uh, what sort of nozzles should we use when spraying. I remember we visited a certain farm. Uh, we had gone with the students. We wanted to see them uh, a demonstration on uh, spraying. Uh, we had arranged for here beside the demonstration. But the nozzles which we found on the boom, which were fitted on the boom, were oro cones for insecticides. Then when we tried to say, no, we need the, those for herbicides, then the farmer said, no, he always uses those nozzles. He doesn't change them. <laughs> so, you <can> see, <laughs> so you can see problems there. Yeah, so yeah, so so some farmers do not, you know, they just buy a boom sprayer fitted with nozzles. They are not going to change them. They say they wanted to spray besides, they just use the same nozzles throughout, and it's a it's a serious problem because uh, pesticides are wasted. Any questions? Okay, let me stop uh, recording so that we can talk about uh, other things uh, concerning uh, the timetable. <laughs>